we can't see you. We can see uh, a picture though. Yes. Okay, is that how you is that how you prefer it to be? Yes, because of security reasons. Okay, that's fine. Just wanted to make sure. Yes, yeah, it's not safe for me to show my face. Okay, that's not a problem at all. I just wanted to uh, make sure. Appreciate your presence. Can you tell us a little bit about your background for the viewers who ha haven't seen you on the vigils before? Could you explain a little bit about your background and uh, your involvement in support for WikiLeaks, you know, to whatever extent that you feel comfortable talking about it? Well, I'm, I'm, I've been actually been fighting the system since the Reagan years. So I've been through all these U.S. presidents have that have imposed their uh, the U.S. agenda in Latin America. So I've been fighting all of them. So so here I am fighting them, doing the injustice uh, to uh, Assange. And it happens that he Assange is in Ecuador in the Ecuadorian embassy, and and as, as an Ecuadorian citizen, uh, we cannot allow the treatment that he is being given by the Ecuadorian government, Lenin Moreno, who is friendly to the United States. So that's that's my more or less my background. So. That is incredible. Thank you for joining us. And I, I agree that it's incredible the way in which the establishment has continued to pressure Ecuador to give over Assange. What has it been like watching that from within Ecuador and the, the shift in policies on Assange from uh, Rafael Correa's government to the government of Lenin, Lenin Moreno? Well, you know, it, it, we have a president who all of a sudden turned around and, and declared himself neoliberal uh, guy following orders from the United States. So right now he, Lenin Moreno is basically trading money for for loans from the from approval from the United States uh, to give, be given loans and also the Chevron case is also here has been put in the bag too. So from the beginning the U.S. administration put Assange, Chevron, and the loans from the IMF. That's basically uh, what they, what I can see that they put in the back. So I guess they told Le Lenin Moreno, if you want the loans, you have to give us a such, you have to solve the, the Chevron problem. And, and that's what he's been doing. Could you explain so, a little bit more to viewers about the Chevron problem so that if, if they're unaware or, or unfamiliar with that, that they understand what that yes. is referring to? Yes, in the 1970s, uh, Ecuador began to exploit the uh, oil from the Amazon region. So Texaco, at that time, or uh, no, it was Occidental Petroleum, and then Texaco was exploiting the oil fields in the Amazon River, uh, in the Amazon jungle. So they, they, are, they were supposed to build these pools of uh, oil waste byproduct. Uh, but the codes, the building codes to do that, for example, in the United States, the same oil production, they would build, you know, good uh, uh, pools to put all, all the waste there. But in the Amazon, they didn't do that. They just made them um, out of uh, dirt. So with time, you know, with the, in the Amazon, it rains torrentially, I mean, torrentially. So the uh, oil pools begin began to leak until they just burst open. So there there are about a, about one thousand or so pools like that, all over the Amazon region, and they are all contaminated the, the ancestral people of of the Amazon that live there. So the rivers, the lakes, everything is contaminated. So they cannot drink the water. So that's why the uh, Amazon uh, ancestral people took Chevron. Chevron bought uh, Texaco. So that's why they, the Amazon people took uh, Chevron to court. So they had a, a 12 billion you know, judgment against Chevron. And they've been doing all these kinds of things to not pay the money. They just, you know, it's already several years since that judgment against Chevron. 
and they go through all these tricks and you know using foreign courts and pay the judges and corruption all over is the same corruption that guarantees wars and and, and invasions everywhere you know Absolutely. it's the same corruption the same people so and that's why they they want Julian Assange and 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 all the foreign leaders that that are against that they want them out they take them out so that's why Assange is the the what uh, nobody has done so let he let the people of the world know what was going going on what these people were doing behind our backs so so that's why they they want to shut him up that yeah, absolutely and i i think what you point out as well is so important to remember is the the power imbalance and the as you say corruption that is not only affecting the amazonian people and the amazonian uh, ecosystems but equally has been the the premise of the pretext for so many wars across the middle east and, and across the world and so much yes. intervention you know so yes. absolutely it's connected to absolutely everything else as well um the as you say the same corruption um, yes. Yeah. Th- this week, I uh, just came out. The uh, lawyer for the Amazon people, he just came out. Uh, he put out a tweet that Lenin Moreno sent a secret letter to Canada, guaranteeing the Chevron case will be solved. Wow. So there you have it. Yeah. There. Yeah. Exactly. What is the feeling among Ecuadorians in Ecuador about Julian Assange, about WikiLeaks, and about uh, Lenin Moreno's policies towards them? Well, right now, the Lenin Moreno's uh, uh, in the polls, he is uh, at uh, almost zero percent. Wow. Especially now that the uh, corruption allegations against him just blew up uh, in the social media. Because the newspapers have not published anything. All the news media have not published anything about the corruption case against him. So he is he has now uh, case, court cases in uh, Spain, Panama, and here he has a case one in Ecuador. But the court in Ecuador is not moving. It's not moving. <laughs> it's not moving. So so his popularity is is just zero. Yeah, and, and it's it's so it's so shocking as an outsider, as somebody who's been watching this development and the policies, the changes in his policies over the course of his presidency so far. Um, I remember when people who supporters of WikiLeaks and Julian Assange were celebrating that Moreno won because he was supposed to be or was thought to be the more supportive of the two candidates for Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. I believe his opponent had promised to um, essentially kick Julian Assange out of the embassy. So it's definitely a shame to have seen his presidency take the course that it has and essentially just um, obey the wishes and pressure of uh, the United States. But. Yes, well, you, you remember, I don't know, if, I don't remember if one of the WikiLeaks uh, releases was the, uh, the Abu Ghraib, uh, uh, you know, tortures and all those things that happened in Abu Ghraib. Yeah. Did any court ever in the United States ever condemn any of these people to make, you know? Not to my knowledge. No. Not to my knowledge. No, they are, they are, you know, they are walking free, you know, criminals, because these are war criminals. They are just walking free in the United States. Absolutely. No, and, and I think that, again, like that's a, that brings up that fundamental point that it, instead of the, uh, you know, the perpetrators of these crimes being uh, prosecuted properly for the crimes they've committed that they've been exposed committing um, you know over and over again whether it's John Kiriakou exposing the torture program of the CIA and being the only one prosecuted or whether it's Chelsea Manning exposing war crimes and being the only one prosecuted in relation to all of that exposure uh, we just see over and over again that it is the criminals who are protected and the truth tellers who are prosecuted um, do you see that type of thing as well happening in Ecuador? Uh, are there local examples or national examples of that as well? Yes. Well, you know, the, the court, because uh, Lenin Moreno uh, controls the uh, justice system and the, con- the, and the uh, National Assembly, which is, you know, like the Congress of the United States. So he controls them. So they are protecting him. They are protecting not just him, but a whole mafia in government. 
the, the, this mafia that was just waiting there to take their for their place to come, you know, after Rafael Correa. And, and and you see, there's all this mafia. This is just that they make up a whole mafia, you know, in the whole world. You know, they all know each other, the multi-billionaires. They all know each other. They all own the stocks in the in the war making uh, factories, you know. Uh, that seems and, to be the situation. And the judges are the yeah. same. You know? Yeah. The judge in Virginia that, that would supposedly would uh, see uh, Assange. Uh, I think there's, I think there's a lady. It, it, you know, if one thinks about it, this judge in Virginia, she is protecting a mafia. Absolutely, and it seems that that type of corruption, um, as you say, is going on. Uh, you know, whether it's in Venez- uh, Ecuador or whether it's in uh, the United States or in relation to Julian Assange and WikiLeaks, it seems to be unfortunately commonplace and prevalent across the world and especially in the west as well uh, where we have these plutocrats and this plutocratic class um, forming this corrupt power structure that protects itself um, and part of that obviously as we're saying is to pre- uh, is to prosecute those who expose their crimes but uh, Jose I'd like to ask you uh, what have you seen any uh, sort of change or are there any um, if there are any other viewers and listeners that are in Ecuador, are there any groups that are, are kind of um, demonstrating in support of WikiLeaks and Julian Assange, or is there a kind of a public sentiment that, that of support for them? No, there, there hasn't okay. been any uh, any demonstrations, you know, apart from the uh, one that there was, you know, several months ago in favor of him. Remember when uh, one of the uh, representatives went to to make a, a, a protest uh, to, to evict Assange in front of the presidential palace. And we made a counter protest. In the end, they had to leave the plaza because they, they lost the, uh, <laughs> we outnumbered them. <laughs> I would, yeah, I would, I would expect so. And I think that uh, there have also been many Ecuadorians who I know, um, I've seen, seen pictures yes. and video of them um, supporting and, and showing up uh, outside the Ecuadorian embassy in London to uh, support Assange there. So that's been really inspiring to see. Absolutely. Yes, I'm in contact with Ecuadorian group in uh, in London. I usually write to them when there is a uh, a chance to, for a protest or something like that at the at the embassy. Uh, so apart from that, uh, th- there has not been any. Because you see, all the uh, focus right now is in the this coming Sunday election. Right. So the whole people are focusing on that, and and Lenny Moreno is trying to make all these tricks, pushing electoral laws at the last minute uh, to curtail, uh, you know, uh, the vote. So he, for example, he just eliminated from the voting rolls more than a hundred thousand foreign nationals who were entitled to vote. He, he just took them off the, the rolls. Wow. Yeah. That is incredible. Yes, because they, they usually they vote uh, progressive for uh, Correa Party, you see. So they just want they didn't want their vote to show up in the elections. That is incredible. Um, yes. sw- switching topics a little bit, do you, as an activist yourself, and as somebody who's been an activist, as you say, for, for decades on various issues to, uh, related to this, this type of corruption, do you have any advice for the viewers and listeners of, of this uh, vigil on how they can, uh, you know, empower themselves and become activists, what they can do to help and support uh, Julian Assange and WikiLeaks and generally um, this kind of cause for transparency and against corruption? Well, you know, I, I think if we are all the people who are watching the uh, the vigil and also are always present at the uh, at the in social media, I think we we were born to to you know to protest the system, and we must keep fighting because nobody else is going to do it if we don't do it. It's exactly. it's as simple as that. We just have to do it because nobody else. Is going to do it, but us. 
Definitely. Absolutely. And I think one thing yes. people have to remember that w that I, I've written a number of times and, and I've said in previous vigils, but it's been long enough that maybe, you know, some viewers and listeners didn't hear it at the time, uh, is that everyone has a different situation. They're in different places. They have different tools and abilities that they have access to, whether it's, you know, money that you can donate to Assange or Chelsea Manning's defense, whether it is, uh, you know, like an ability to, you know, like, let's say someone who's a singer songwriter who can make music, whether it's somebody who um, is a journalist who can raise their voice in support, or whether it's somebody who simply has a large network of friends who they can talk to and spread um, the message of what is actually going on in regards to WikiLeaks and Julian Assange versus the lies of establishment press. Everyone has something that they can contribute to this sort of effort. Exactly. Uh, for example, uh, a lot of times uh, you can get this news, for example, in the in the right in the right wing uh, 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 population by. Uh, Showing them, for example, the, uh, I'll just give you an example, the video footage of, of what WikiLeaks showed, you know, the killing from the helicopter. Right, of collateral murder, so yes. You produce uh, uh, points like that, that you are not talking about politics, you are not talking about, and then they are going to uh, ask questions naturally. And that's where you, where you, where you, you know, put your, uh, your ideas, you know, without saying that you are from the left or something like that. Absolutely. You yeah, know, I think that it's important that, that people not just on the right, but on the left raise their voices. And I think that's been a definite problem is that a lot of uh, left wing outlets um, have been persuaded against WikiLeaks simply because of the events of 2016. And I think that's really short sighted and a shame. And I hope that that changes in the near future when people understand that this is, um, you know, that the, the that this is going to be the Trump administration that is actually going after journalists via this, you know, Assange precedent, via the persecution of WikiLeaks and Chelsea Manning and the rest. But. Well, uh, yes. Uh, well, you know, a lot of so-called left-wing sites have websites and things like that that cost money. And a lot of them are just there because they need the attention. And they, they actually, when they actually have to fight for something, they, they just don't do it because, you know, their financing is going to uh, uh, to be affected. You know, they won't be able, for example, to pay for the website or something like that, you know, things like that. Or, or for example, I, I have noticed that a lot of the right wing can, for example, they, they can put out so much information that your, your what you are, trying to, to focus on, it just gets lost in, you know, in the mountain of information. I don't know if you get my point. Yeah, no, I, I do. I understand. Yeah, no, that's a really great point. And especially um, right. with the news cycle as busy as it, as it is, it is so easy to, uh, you know, stop paying attention to cases like Assange's in terms of him yeah. being gagged because it falls away from the news cycle or it's so easy to for, um, kind of forget um, the situation that Chelsea Manning is now in because she has been, you know, silenced and there is, you know, maybe little, very little um, new news to report. And that is um, a real shame. And I think that that is something that we have to, that this vigil is designed to prevent is people forgetting and no longer paying attention to the, to the suffering of truth tellers. Yes. You know, I think that's what they do. You know, for example, if right now we, if we are doing, you know, something in favor of Assange, they, they will put out a lot of uh, articles and things like that that are progressive. But the, their intention is to, you know, put a cloud so that our, our uh, intention, our point is, is just covered. It just gets hidden, you know? Yeah, and li lies of omission and, uh, yeah, the absence of coverage are definitely very easy ways to allow these really, truly important stories to be missed and for the public to just be con continue to be misinformed on these subjects. Um, it's really yes. unfortunate that, that so much of the public has been fed total misinformation about uh, WikiLeaks, about Julian Assange, about the history of WikiLeaks. Uh, as, as some of the information that we read from earlier said, uh, you know, 
the U.S. authorities, the Pentagon, had to admit during the court martial procedure of, of Chelsea Manning that WikiLeaks publications had not harmed national security and had not resulted in the harm of service members. And I think that's a really incredible point that, again, like you're, you're saying, is so often, um, you know, these important aspects of these cases are so often just left out and forgotten. And the, in that case, the public is, you know, disadvantaged in its lack of um, understanding. Well, this this trick has been going on for for decades. I don't know if you remember, for example, the scandals, so many scandals of so many big politicians and things like that, that, that they were just never made a media bomb, you know? They were just mentioned briefly somewhere and then that's it. That that sounds about right. I mean, given everything that we see now, yeah. um, I. I was not alive at the time of some of those events, but I, I've read about the corruption involved in that case and in that in those related stories, and it's horrendous. Um, if you'd yes. like to talk about that uh, for the benefit of the viewers and listeners, I'd be glad to hear uh, about it, some of you know either your experiences or just the situation that took place during that time. Well, I I, re I remember, for example, the Iran Contra affair at, at the U.S. Uh, Congress. It was just washed in the press, you know. It was just, it was never, it was never, uh, it, it never exploded in the press. It's it just, it was just covered briefly. Uh, and Oliver North, for example, he, he was convicted to prison and he was later released. And all these people are still around, you know. And it's the big money. They all want the big money because they want to buy the big house, you know, house in Europe, house in south of France, you know, house in every state, uh, in the Bahamas with nice cars. They all want to be millionaires. So they will sell their souls and, and they don't care if they convict one or two people, innocent people, for, to get that. Absolutely. And we and, you know, you mentioned that we still see these these faces and names around. And that's so, so true when we look at figures like Elliot Abrams now uh, being, you know, officially involved in the U.S. and sort of in attempts at intervention in Venezuela, which is horrendous to anyone who knows about that history of his involvement in awful like death squads and all sorts of horrendous um, events in during the time period that we're discussing. It's it's. Um, Again, if it wasn't for, you know, I can't imagine the way that the history books would have been different if we, so if an organization like WikiLeaks had existed during uh, the Iran-Contra scandal and if that time period, you know, if there had been a really legitimate um, organization that could have exposed the, you know, those stories earlier. Um, obviously, there were a few great reporters um, who who worked on those stories, but like you said, they were not given a voice in establishment press outlets. They were not broadcast across the entire nation, and it the those episodes are, you know, conveniently left out of, uh, you know, the American history books when it comes to education and college classes and that type of thing as well. So. It's essentially memory hold in the American public mind. But, um, well, you know, all our countries have constitutions. Right. And it says very clearly there, most of constitutions say there, that the people are the, are the ones who decide which course democracy is going to take, uh, the direction that is going to go. But all of a sudden, you get the corporations, you get the warmongers, you know, they are, they are deciding for us, you see? So, and, and they are not in the constitution anywhere, you see? Absolutely. <laughs> well, now, yeah, with, with uh, yeah, go ahead. Right, so, so that's, that was my point. Corporations are not in the constitution. Yeah, actually, you know? I, I forget who it was. There was somebody who tweeted that really recently. I think it was actually right. Ralph Nader who said that co corporations yes, exactly. are not in the constitution. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. It's only we the people. Exactly. But we the people is a joke by now, <laughs> believe me. Unfortunately. Definitely. Well, and, and I think, uh, and I'm going to uh, change the subject a little bit just to tell everyone that, um, and this is unrelated, I think, to obviously to the to the build up in plain clothes uh, British uh, police officers at the ground, uh, on the grounds of the Ecuadorian embassy in London. But I do want to just say that uh, WikiLeaks has tweeted out um, an article from the Washington Post 
titled Mueller report sent to attorney general signaling his Russia investigation has, uh, let me just see the rest of this as I open it, uh, has ended. And WikiLeaks tweeted about the article saying, quote, US Attorney General Barr, Mueller has concluded his investigation of Russian interference in the 2016 election and related matters. No collusion indictments were made. So I think that's a really important news that I wanted to just um, let everyone know about as well. But uh, Jose, if you have any um, comments on just what you think the future may hold for Julian Assange and WikiLeaks, um, you know, maybe your hopes for the the type of activism that people can enact and support, but also what you see maybe coming from the Ecuador, the current Ecuadorian president and, and government. Um, you know, do you think that uh, that there is that they are going to possibly um, you know, totally fall under the weight of U.S. pressure? What do you see going forward? Well, let us remember that the ruling by the OAS uh, uh, Human Rights Court ordered Ecuador that they cannot evict Assange. That was a very important ruling. Very important ruling. Now, I do not know. Now, let us remember that the president of the OAS is a Almagro. He's a right wing guy. And he is constantly attacking all the enemies of the United States Nicaragua, Cuba, Venezuela. You know, so we don't know what's going to happen, but that ruling is very important. I think we needed that ruling to make the Assange situation at the, at the embassy to be safer, because he has now the backing of the of the court for the, from the OAS. So that is very important. So that even if the uh, Lenin Moreno uh, leaves his post before he finishes the term, his presidential term, as as the rumors are, are saying here, because so the, the right wing uh, vice president will be the president. So I don't know, if, I mean, they have pushed for Assange to leave the embassy, the right wing party, but the ruling by the court from the OAS stops that. So I think that uh, Assange is, is going to be safe for the time being. So we don't know what the United States is going to do. That's a problem, you see. We do Absolutely. not know what the United States is going to do. Especially now that they are using money to, to get that. That's what I, that's the way I see it. They're using money to get Assange evicted from the embassy. Unfortunately, that is exactly what it looks like. All efforts yeah. are being made uh, to do. Yeah. Absolutely, it's a, um, it's an incredibly depressing situation. But I think that the the worse that it gets um, at the embassy and and as far as the Ecuadorian government is concerned, uh, I think that that should um, bolster the efforts to support Assange and to support WikiLeaks. It should increase the activism, and you know we should definitely not allow that to discourage us from acting in support. I think it should literally just make a stronger uh, response amongst the public because, you know, we've said it many times before on this vigil, but it bears repeating that Assange is essentially one of the few representatives of the public interest because uh, WikiLeaks, the organization he co-founded, is one of the few outlets, as Hedges in the article we read today, you know, wrote that is allowing us to peer into the machinations of those that rule us in the corrupt way that they do, as you've discussed, you know, as you, um, you know, whether it's now or whether it's during the Iran Contra scandal, these types of corrupt machinations of power are ongoing worsening. And if it's not, if not for Assange and WikiLeaks, you know, there would be absolutely no way to really poke a hole in that system. Yeah, there is a ray of hope because if we win uh, Sunday's uh, election, uh, especially for the government body called the CPCCS, which is a, a special power for a very powerful uh, government body that they, they can even call for new elections or recall the president. So if we, if our party wins 
majority in that government body, uh, Lenín Moreno is going to be in big problems. And uh, Rafael Correa has said that if, that, uh, if we win an, uh, this Sunday's election, he will come back to Ecuador. And Lenín Moreno will be, will be in trouble <laughs> because Correa is the most, most powerful politician. What, have you heard anything in, in, in news or developments regarding uh, Lenin Moreno's attempt to actually um, you know, prosecute Rafael Correa? I believe that that's the last that I heard of. I haven't heard any news recently about that, but is there anything that the audience should know about that development? Yes, he, well, Rafael Correa already has 23 legal ac accusations against him. Because Lenín Moreno wants, you see the, the constitution says very clearly that you cannot be, be become an elected government official or government employee if you have a corruption accusation, you see? So he, Lenín Moreno, has been trying to push that, that accusation against Correa, but none have so far been successful. So uh, we are hoping to win the, this coming election. And uh, if we do that, uh, Lenin Moreno will be in trouble because we we can recall him easily. Good. Well, so, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And I think that's really positive yes. news in, in a situation where there yes. very often is, there's very often not positive news. So thank you for sharing that. Yes. Um, I hope that, that that is successful. And I hope that, you know, I hope that, that at least in Ecuador, that the, the will of the people is respected as far as their, their leaders are concerned and, and their ability to oust someone who they are um, unsatisfied with the performance of? Well, there, there, there is a, a big concern with, uh, with the uh, computer hacking of the electoral body uh, computers that they use for the uh, elections. Because in the 2013 elections, they had more than 7,000 attempts at, to break into the computers. And all these attempts came out of, the, of other countries especially the United States. So th this is a, a big thing, a big important uh, thing to, to see. So we do not know now that the, that the electoral body is in the hands of uh, Lenin Moreno, we do not know if they will open the gates for these people to do whatever they, they want to do in the, uh, you know, in the computers. Hack Absolutely. Them. Yes. <laughs> And thank you, thank you for joining us today. It, it has been a rocky day with all of the, you know, up the uh, live news that's been developing and uh, the interruption in our hosting. But I think that we, I really do thank you for for joining us and uh, providing your perspective from within Ecuador. It's extremely valuable to hear your experience and the perspective you have from within the country that has been so um, fundamentally intertwined with and. Um, you know, supportive for a very long time of Julian Assange and has provided shelter for him for years um, before, as you know, as many have, have noted, the transformation of, of the refuge of asylum into um, a punishment of solitary confinement. So thank you. Mm -hmm.